Epigenetics is today's most widely read and effective book on the human mind. It sold many millions of copies in more than 32 languages. All over the world, people like you are learning and using the highly effective procedures of Dianetics to improve their lives. Many people learn Dianetics right at home, just as you are doing. Others join local study groups or attend workshops and classes at a Dianetics Center or Church of Scientology. Dianetics is the only effective technology of the mind in existence, yet it is easy to learn and use. In fact, anyone can rapidly learn and start applying Dianetics procedures right at home. This program shows you how. In the next hour, you will actually learn to apply the procedures of Dianetics to make the dramatic and lasting improvements you want in your life. You can be positive and confident in life. The goal of Dianetics is a finite state called clear, an unrepressed person who operates on full self-determinism. You can be clear. This program starts you on the road to achieving that. Dianetics completely changed my life. You know, before Dianetics, I'd had two failed marriages. I had this idea of how marriage should be, and I'd pretty much just given up and decided it couldn't be that way. And after reading Dianetics and getting auditing, I met a man who I've been very happily married to for 10 years, and I found out I was right all along. Marriage can be wonderful, and I have that now. When I was seven or eight, I had a bicycle accident, and I injured my knees. As a result of the injury, I lost all the feeling in my knees, and I couldn't run, I couldn't jump, and it caused a lot of problems for me. I didn't do well in school, and things just didn't go well. Uh, doctors came, doctors went, trying to handle it, and nothing really worked. Then years went by, and I was introduced to Dianetics, uh, and in the very first Dianetics session, we addressed my knees. Uh, I left the session and I felt great, but I wasn't really thinking about my knees until I got outside. And when I got outside, I felt the wind blow across my knees, and it was unbelievable. I felt my knees for the first time in years. Uh, since then, I run and jump. I've done eight marathons. I sail big boats up and down the coast, and the bad knees are just a forgotten part of the past. When I first started doing Dianetics, I was very nervous and very skeptical about it. I couldn't believe that it was as simple to do as everybody was telling me. But right from the start, I found that it actually was. It was fun to do. I really enjoyed being helped and helping others. And the changes in my life were miraculous right from the beginning. When I tried Dianetics, I was completely amazed. It really works. If you want to have a positive life, I urge you to try Dianetics and use the techniques. It's simple, it's fast, you get immediate results, and you get benefits that'll last a whole lifetime. First, let's review some basic discoveries of Dianetics. What is the goal of man? What is the purpose of life? Time, space, energy, and life have a single common denominator. They all began at some point of origin, and were commanded to continue to some nearly infinite destination. They obey a single order. Survive. The dynamic principle of existence is survive. Pain is physical or mental suffering. The ultimate pain could be just before death, and the ultimate pleasure could be conceived as immortality. The thrust of survival is away from death and toward immortality. Man in affinity with man survives, and that survival is pleasure. The survival dynamic is the tenacity to life and vigor and persistence in survival. The survival dynamic subdivides into parts. These urges or motivations are called dynamics. The first dynamic is the urge toward survival as one's self. Here we have individuality expressed fully. This can be called the self-dynamic. On this dynamic we have you. This includes all your personal possessions, your hobbies, 
your health, and so on. The second dynamic has two compartments. One is sex and the other is the rearing of children. This dynamic is man's urge toward survival as a future generation. This includes the family unit and any family activity. It also includes sex as a mechanism to compel future survival. Dynamic three is groups, the urge on the part of the individual to survive as part of a group. That covers any kind of a group, temporary or permanent groups, political groups, social groups, sports clubs, or anything like this. Dynamic four is survival through man as a species. This is the mankind dynamic. War is a breakdown on this dynamic. Accomplishing what you want in life involves making many decisions and solving many problems. The optimum solution for any problem would be one that achieved maximum benefit in all dynamics. Any solution that harms more dynamics than it helps would be a poor solution. For example, something that only benefits self but harms the group or mankind would be a contra-survival decision. The greatest good may require as well some destruction. For example, a new cure which saves many thousands of lives but loses one could be considered an acceptable cure. But the solution deteriorates in ratio to the destructiveness employed. The best solution to any problem is that which is the greatest good to the greatest number of beings. This is the basic equation of all rational behavior. The human mind is engaged in resolving problems related to survival on all dynamics. Intelligence is the ability to perceive, pose, and resolve problems. The human mind can be considered to have two major divisions. The first part is the analytical mind. Consider the analytical mind as a computing machine. It is more capable than any computer ever constructed. It never makes a mistake so long as a human being is reasonably intact. It is called the analytical mind because it analyzes data. The analytical mind has its standard memory banks. The data in these memory banks is filed in recordings called mental image pictures. Here's a demonstration you can do yourself. Close your eyes and think of a cat. Did you get a picture of a cat? That is a mental image picture. These are three-dimensional color pictures with sound and smell and all other perceptions. These pictures are composed of energy and mass. They exist in space. They appear when somebody thinks of something. He thinks of a certain dog. He gets a picture of a dog. The mind contains a consecutive record of mental image pictures which accumulates through a person's life. This is called a time track. It is very exactly dated. If motion picture films were three-dimensional, had 52 perceptions, and could fully react upon the observer, the time track could be called a motion picture film. This information files straight into the standard memory banks. This file begins at a very early period. It then runs consecutively, whether the individual is asleep or awake, except in moments of unconsciousness, for an entire lifetime. It apparently has an infinite capacity. The full power of the mind would be the full power of the analytical mind, using the standard memory banks. You use the power of your analytical mind to solve problems in your life, figure things out, and even to create and imagine. Imagination is extremely valuable in solving problems in life. Sanity depends upon rationality. Here is optimum rationality and therefore optimum sanity.
And here also are all the things man likes to think man should be like. Or, for that matter, what he has represented his better gods to be like. This is the clear. This is sanity. This is happiness. This is survival. Where is the error? Man is basically good. Man has been wrongly accused of being bad because man did not know about the reactive mind. This is the second part of the mind. In Dianetics, irrationality is called aberration, which is a departure from rational thought or behavior. It comes from the Latin aberare, to wander from. It means departure from a straight line. It would also mean the lack of straightness or to see crookedly. A man sees a horse but thinks he sees an elephant. Where does this irrationality come from? Looking again at the analytical mind, we discover that it has gaps in it. There are moments when nothing seems to be filed in the standard banks. These gaps take place during moments of unconsciousness. The shock of accidents, the anesthetics used for operations, the pain of injuries and the deliriums of illness are the principal sources of what we call unconsciousness. These missing periods can be found in the reactive mind. There are two things which appear to be, but are not, recorded in the standard memory banks. Painful emotion and physical pain. During a moment of intense pain, the action of the analytical mind is suspended. The reactive mind kicks in, and these moments of physical pain are recorded in the reactive mind. When the individual is unconscious, in full or in part, the reactive mind is cut in, in full or in part. When he is fully conscious, his analytical mind is fully in command of the organism. When his consciousness is reduced, the reactive mind is fully and continuously recording everything. The reactive mind does not store memories as we think of them. It stores engrams. An engram is a complete recording, down to the last accurate detail, of every perception present in a moment of partial or full unconsciousness. It is a mental image picture of an experience containing pain and unconsciousness. It must have impact or injury as part of its content. The reactive mind continues to make pictures no matter how unconscious a person supposedly is. The reactive mind does not think analytically. It does not reason. It works on a totally stimulus response basis. Let's have a look at how the reactive mind does compute. If the analytical mind did a computation on the subject of apples and worms, it could be stated probably as follows. Some apples have worms in them, others don't. When biting an apple, one occasionally finds a worm. Worms in apples leave holes. The reactive mind would calculate as follows. Apples are worms, are bites, are holes in apples, are holes in anything, are apples, and always are worms, are apples, are bites. Have an apple. This is an irrational reaction. The analytical mind thinks in differences and similarities. The reactive mind thinks in identities. Everything is the same as everything else. The reactive mind just has one equation. A equals A equals A equals A equals A. Everything equals everything else in the incident. The car crash equals the flashing light 
equals the smashed windshield equals a pain in the head. Let's take a look at an engram and how it affects a person's life. Honey, hand me those plates, would you please? Hey, you kids stop fighting, you're making a mess here. Honey? Honey? She looks bad. No, don't try to move her. She's got to stay right here. This entire incident is filed in the reactive mind, and every part of the incident equals everything else. The sound of water running equals the impact, equals the falling steps to it, equals the fact that she is a stupid idiot, equals the fact that she's got to stay right here. These things are now re-stimulators. Re-stimulation is the reactivation of a past memory due to similarities in the present. Any words spoken during the engram act as post-hypnotic commands. When the engram is re-stimulated later, she has a feeling that she is a stupid idiot, that it's her fault, she looks bad, and she's got to stay right here. The place she was injured can start to hurt and can even become disposed to illness or chronic illness. Oh. Hey. This is psychosomatic or mentally caused illness. Engrams can include such things as accidents, injuries, physical abuse, rape, operations, and severe illnesses. Birth itself is an engram. And engrams even occur before birth. A blow or pressure during pregnancy can cause the unborn child to experience pain and unconsciousness. The second type of incident in the reactive mind is called a painful emotion engram. A painful emotion engram is an engram caused by the shock of sudden loss, such as the death of a loved one, or the threat of loss. Let's look at a painful emotion engram. What is it, Mom? Oh. They called me at the office, and it, it's your grandma, sweetheart. She's sick. Let me take her to the hospital. I'm going to go there right away. Oh. Are you okay, Mom? It's my fault. I should have stayed with her. This is a painful emotion engram, a mental image picture of a moment of severe and shocking loss or threat of loss. Painful emotion engrams can include such things as deaths, funerals, loss of a job or business, divorce, loss of a pet, or the threat of loss of these things. The third type of incident in the reactive mind is called a lock. A lock is a mental image picture of an incident where one was knowingly or unknowingly reminded of an engram or a painful emotion engram. It does not itself contain a blow or a burn or impact. It does not contain unconsciousness. It may contain a feeling of pain or illness, but is not itself the source of it. Let's look at a lock. This is very, very important to me. We absolutely have to go to this thing. That's all. She's got to stay right here. No. No, I've got to stay here. Why? I don't get it. I told him we would be there. She looks bad. I just don't want to go anywhere. I look terrible and I'm starting to get a headache. There are many kinds of lock incidents where one is knowingly or unknowingly reminded of an earlier engram. 
The person may think that they are worried about what happened in the lock incident, but what they are actually worried about is the earlier engram. In this way, memories become painful. A person accumulates many, many engrams, painful emotion engrams and locks in the reactive mind. Engrams enforce their commands by wielding the whip of physical pain if the command is not obeyed. In lower life forms, the reactive mind has the purpose of warning of possible danger when the animal is in a similar situation again. However, man has outgrown its use. A man's engrams contain language. Engrams now have words in them which act as post-hypnotic commands and have the power to control the person and the body. Even though there is nothing physically wrong with a person's legs, an engram command can enforce itself on the body, preventing use of the legs. This is psychosomatic illness caused by the reactive mind. Seventy percent of man's illnesses are classed as psychosomatic. That can include such things as arthritis, asthma, allergies, heart trouble, high blood pressure, and migraine headaches. The reactive mind is also the single source of all irrationality. Whatever is irrational about a person's life comes from the reactive mind. That includes fears, uncontrollable emotions, compulsions, obsessions, drug or alcohol dependency, violent or abusive behavior, self-doubt, anxiety, or hopelessness. When the reactive mind is discharged, these things vanish, and they vanish for good. Dianetics is the only technology that makes it possible for you to get rid of your reactive mind. Once handled in Dianetics, the painful incidents are deleted from the reactive mind and no longer have the power to control your health, your emotions, and your attitude towards life. Further, you now have full conscious memory of the incident. It is now a part of the standard memory banks in the analytical mind. How do you contact and handle these past incidents? In Dianetics, one contacts these incidents not by just remembering them, but by returning to them. One sees a boy and a dog. Long after the boy and dog are gone, one can recall the fact that one had seen a boy with a dog. That would be remembering. Returning means that the person sends a portion of his mind to that past incident so that he can re-experience the incident in the same fashion and with the same sensations as before. And could see again the boy and the dog, could hear them, could feel the position of his body, the weight of his clothes, the air on his skin. That is returning. Wide awake, the person can return to moments in his past. Until asked to do so, he probably does not know he has such an ability. Some people, when they think of a rose, see one, smell one, feel one. They see in full color, vividly, with the mind's eye. They smell it. They can feel it. These abilities vary widely from person to person, but remember that any perception is filed in the memory and can be recovered. The mind is a well-built computer, and like any computer, has a method of locating data. If you are asked for the last time you saw a movie, your mind will hand out the date, which movie it was, the plot, who you were with, and many other details. The mind's data retrieval system is called the file clerk. Now obviously there isn't a little man in your mind handing out data, but the mind operates as if there were. In ordinary living, your file clerk hands out data at a rapid rate. The file clerk can retrieve data from both the analytical mind and the reactive mind. Let's look at exactly how this is done in a Dianetics auditing session. Auditing is the action of asking a person a question which he can understand and answer. Locate an incident that you feel you can comfortably face. Getting an answer to that question. Oh, okay. And acknowledging him for that answer. All right. 
Go through the incident and say what is happening as you go along. This is a preclear. A preclear is someone who is receiving Dianetics auditing and is therefore on the road to becoming clear. A clear is someone who has handled all his engrams and no longer has his own reactive mind. This is an auditor. Auditor means one who listens. A person who is applying Dianetics procedures to another is called an auditor. Any two people can audit each other on a turnabout basis. One person audits the second person, and then the second person becomes the auditor and audits the first person. This is called cooperative auditing or co-auditing. Dianetics does not use hypnosis, drugs, or trance techniques, and it is important to have the preclear drug-free and awake. A person should not have any alcohol within 24 hours before the session. If the preclear has had aspirin or pain reliever, he needs to wait seven days before the session. Aspirin and drugs interfere with mental pictures. Let's look at the 10 steps of Dianetics Auditing. These 10 steps are covered in Book 3, Chapter 5 of the book Dianetics. First, the auditor has to assure the preclear that he will know everything that happens. We will begin the session now. You will remain aware of everything which goes on. You will be able to remember everything that happens here. You can pull yourself out of anything which you get into if you don't like it. The second step is to have the preclear close his eyes. All right, close your eyes. The third step is the auditor has to ensure that anything said or done during the session will have no force or control over the preclear at a later time after the session. The auditor makes an agreement with the preclear to cancel this from occurring. This is called installing the canceller. In the future, when I utter the word canceled, everything I've said to you while you're in a session will be canceled and will have no force with you. Any suggestion I've made to you will be without force when I say the word canceled. Do you understand? Good. In the fourth step, the auditor has to locate and return the preclear to an incident. This must be something the preclear locates and is something he can comfortably face. We're going to find an incident in your life of which you have an exact record. Then, by sending you through it at the moment it happens several times, we're going to reduce it. Locate an incident that you feel you can comfortably face. Oh, okay. My husband and I are fighting in the kitchen. The auditor now has to return the pre-clear to the incident that has been located. Okay. Go to the beginning of that incident. The preclear sends a portion of her mind to the past incident so that she can re-experience it. Now we come to the fifth step, getting the preclear to tell the auditor about the incident from beginning to end, while returned to it and experiencing it again. The auditor works with the preclear's file clerk to get data about the incident. All right, go through the incident and say what is happening as you go along. My husband wants to go to a party his boss is giving. I just feel tired. I'm starting to get a headache. Okay. Go to the beginning of that incident. It is very important that the preclear goes through the incident as though it is happening at that moment and not simply as a memory of something that happened in the past. I tell him I just want to stay home. He gets mad and tells me he told them we'd be there and now I'm not going. I tell him that I just don't feel well. I look terrible. I'm starting to get a headache. I feel like an idiot. It's missing his party and it's all my fault. Have the preclear go back to the beginning of the incident again and recount it. I understand. Go back to the beginning and go over it. Pick up whatever additional data you can contact. Okay. I'm washing dishes and he's drawing them. He's trying to get me to go to this party. I tell him I, I just want to stay here. He starts yelling at me. He says he promised them that we'd be there and, and now I don't want to go. 
I tell him I just want to stay here. I look bad. I'm starting to get a headache. He gets mad and storms out of the kitchen. Very good. Go back to the beginning and go over it. Pick up whatever additional data you can contact. The auditor is listening for new data coming out of the incident. As long as the pre-clear is recovering more sights, sounds, feelings, emotions, etc. from the incident, the charge is reducing. Oh, yeah. The kids are running around knocking things over in the middle of all this. I'm trying to wash the dishes. I'm getting a headache. My husband keeps pressing me about this party. Don't let the pre-clear just repeat what he or she remembers saying the last time. Help the pre-clear to look at the incident freshly each time through. Ask questions like, what do you see? What do you hear? You can ask about colors, smells, or any other perceptions in the incident. I just don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay here. All right. What do you hear? Hmm. I hear the water running in the sink. And I hear the kids in the other room. My husband asked me why I can't go. He says he told them we would be there. All right. What do you see? I see the dishes and the sink. OK. Continue. I tell him I don't want to go anywhere. Repeat this step again and again, each time telling the pre-clear to go back to the beginning of the incident and go through it to the end. Continue to run the incident until the pre-clear is cheerful about it. When the pre-clear is cheerful about running that incident, Go on to step 6B. Choose another incident that the pre-clear feels he can now comfortably face. Let's find another incident that you feel you can comfortably face. Yeah. The time my mother had a stroke. I was in the kitchen with my daughter. Return the pre-clear to this new incident and audit it by continuing the procedure with step 5 followed by step 6A. Run the pre-clear through the incident as many times as it takes to bring the pre-clear to the point where he is cheerful about it. Then choose another incident to audit using the procedure as described earlier. Keep finding and auditing incidents on your pre-clear. If the pre-clear does not seem to be able to uncover any more about an incident despite many recountings and is not becoming more cheerful about it, then find out from the pre-clear if there is an earlier incident similar to the one you are auditing. Same thing. My daughter and I go to the hospital and my mother's out of critical condition and the doctor said that we should go home and um, I don't know, I'm not seeing anything new. Okay. Is there an earlier incident similar to the one we're auditing? Hmm. Yeah, there is. I haven't thought about this for ages. Very good. Go to the beginning of that incident. Good. Go through the incident and say what is happening as you go along. This is a long time ago. We're cleaning up after dinner. The kids are teasing each other. I'm trying to put some plates away up in this high shelf where we keep them. I'm standing on a step stool. All right, continue. The kids are fighting. They hit the step stool and I fall off. I hit my head on the floor and I black out. When I come to, there's an ambulance there. I feel like such an idiot. Mm, my head hurts. Oh, I'm, I'm getting a headache now. That's all. All right, go back to the beginning and go over it. Pick up whatever additional data you can contact. As long as new data is still coming out of the incident, 
The auditor needs to continue to run the incident using steps 5 and 6A. Then my head hits the floor and I black out. My head hurts. I feel like a stupid idiot. It's my own fault. Wait a minute. That's my family talking. They're saying that. What'd you do, you stupid idiot? It was your fault. Shut up, both of you. Honey? Honey? She looks bad. No, don't try to move her. She's got to stay right here. She's got to stay right here. <laughs> No wonder I never wanted to go out. <laughs> this is a good time to end off for today. To end the session, you go on to step seven. The auditor now has to bring the pre-clear back to present time. Okay, we'll be ending the session shortly. Come to present time. Okay. Good. Step eight is making sure the pre-clear is in present time. Are you in present time? Yes. Fine. The auditor now has to give the pre-clear the word cancelled so that nothing in the session will act as a command or suggestion to the pre-clear at a later time. This is step nine. Cancelled. The auditor now should restore the pre-clear to his present time environment. This is step ten and is the final step of Dianetics procedure. When I count from five to one and snap my fingers, you'll feel alert. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow, what a great feeling. I would have never known. And my headache's gone. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Yeah, that was pretty there you have it. That was a Dianetics auditing session shown with all its parts. In future sessions, other engrams and incidents are taken up and handled. Good results depend on doing many auditing sessions like the one you just observed. Trade off with another person. In this way, you both progress towards clear. With your video, you have also received a card that looks like this. This card lists out all of the steps you have just seen, with exactly what to say and do at each step. People of all ages and all walks of life have successfully applied these techniques, and you can too. The first step is to find a partner to work with. This can be a family member or a friend, anyone who is interested in improving themselves. It's easy to find someone to work with. You'll be surprised how many people in your neighborhood or at work would like to experience the results of Dianetics. If you need assistance in finding a partner, call us at 1-800-367-8788. The Dianetics Consultants will help you find someone in your area to work with. Right in your area, there are people like you who want to get started auditing. As soon as you have found someone to work with, get started using the procedure you have just seen in this program. If you have any questions about Dianetics procedure or need any assistance as you go, Help is always just a phone call away. And even if you don't yet have a co-audit partner, you can still get started on your road to clear right now. Following the release of Dianetics, L. Ron Hubbard wrote the book Self-Analysis. He wanted to provide a way for everyone to experience the results of Dianetics for themselves. The book contains lists of questions you use to explore your past and open up your memory and awareness. In the full use of Dianetics, these questions could be considered as preparatory to co-auditing. Use of these lists of questions open your ability to run engrams and painful emotion engrams and also raise your level of survival. These questions will not run out engrams and painful emotion engrams as such, but will desensitize them to a marked extent with a consequent improvement in mental and physical being. Included with the book is a special disc which you use with the questions. 
The disc helps you to concentrate on particular sense perceptions. The book also comes with tests that you can use to find out more about yourself and chart your improvement. Self-analysis is auditing you can do by yourself, but it is not self-auditing. Rather, the reader is actually being audited by L. Ron Hubbard, the author. If you do not have a copy of Self-Analysis, call this number. Dianetics will conduct you on the most exciting adventure of your life. The adventure of you. With every session, you get rid of more and more incidents from your reactive mind and regain more and more of your true potential and ability. The goal of Dianetics procedure is a finite state called clear. A clear is a person who no longer has his own reactive mind. Clear is a new state for man, one which has never been achieved before in all his long history. The clear operates using the full potential of his analytical mind. He has gotten rid of the vicious control of the reactive mind over his life. The clear is not a buried unknown or a different person, but an intensity of all that is best and most able in the person. Your personality, creative ability and drive do not come from your aberrations. Man is basically good, creative and constructive. Take away his aberrations and with them go the evil, pain and unhappiness in his life. Dianetics is the first study of the mind, which is easily understood, easily learned and can be applied by anyone. That goal has never been achieved before in man's history. People all over the world are winning with Dianetics. And after going clear, I realized that I could do anything I wanted to do. And I realized who I was. And it wasn't who my parents told me it was. And it wasn't what I was expected to be. But I figured out who I was. And I saw that I had so much more potential than I ever thought I had. I had allergies and aches and pains and problems with my family that I figured I'd have the rest of my life. Well, very simply, with Dianetics, I got rid of all those. My allergies are gone. I'm getting along great with my family. And I'm finally doing the things in life I've always wanted to do. So what I tell everybody is that no matter how much you have in life, you really don't have anything until you have yourself. And that's what Dianetics gives you, is yourself. So you got to do it. Dianetics is very fast, very powerful. And if you haven't tried it, then what you're missing out on is your own happiness. You can't even put a price on what Dianetics can do. It gave me back myself. And that's worth everything. Dianetics is absolutely the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Everyone should do it. Dianetics has broad use. Education, medicine, politics, art. All branches of human thought are clarified with Dianetics principles. One key branch of Dianetics is preventive Dianetics. The technology of preventing engrams and other reactive incidents from occurring in the first place. Many medical professionals now insist on complete silence in the operating room and during childbirth to safeguard the sanity of the individual. Another branch of Dianetics is social Dianetics. A society, like an individual, has its analytical mind and its reactive mind. And as we have seen with an individual, a society too can be re-stimulated into irrational and destructive behavior, violence, strife, even war. There is no problem or conflict which cannot be solved with reason. An ideal society would be a society of unaberrated persons, clears, conducting their lives with mutual respect and trust. We stand between one state of man and a higher state. With Dianetics, a bridge has been built from the world as it is now to a better, happier and saner world. At the end of the book, Dianetics, L. Ron Hubbard urged the reader to get busy and build a better bridge. In the five decades since the publication of Dianetics, that bridge has been strengthened and widened. What began as a book has become a worldwide movement. Today there are thousands of groups, centers and organizations throughout the world. Here you can attend workshops and seminars on Dianetics. And you'll find further books on the subject such as The Evolution of a Science, 
In this book, L. Ron Hubbard describes exactly how he discovered the principles that you have just seen in this program. This is the story of his research into how the mind works. The Dynamics of Life was L. Ron Hubbard's original work on Dianetics, where he first revealed the existence of the reactive mind. Even before it was published, this manuscript created so much excitement that it was copied and passed from hand to hand all over the world. Child Dianetics is a book that shows you how to use Dianetics principles in raising and helping children. This book gives you Dianetics auditing procedures you can use with children to help them overcome the effect of the reactive mind on their lives. And Science of Survival. This is the most comprehensive book you will ever read about the behavior and emotions of people. This book and the chart that comes with it tells you why people act the way they do, who you can trust, and who you can't. And there are many other books and audio tapes available. Dianetics is a broad subject. It crosses all national, racial, and ethnic boundaries. People from all walks of life are learning Dianetics and using the procedures of Dianetics to get rid of the enslavement of the reactive mind. Tens of thousands of people have gone clear. You can be clear too. In fact, by watching this program, you have already started on the road to clear. You now need to apply what you've just learned. With study, patience, and work, you'll make it. Dianetics is for you. Learn it. Audit with your friends and family and have them audit you. Start a group. As L. Ron Hubbard said in the book Dianetics, you are beginning an adventure. Treat it as an adventure. And may you never be the same again. L. Ron Hubbard envisioned a world where man could rise above his problems and suffering and achieve true happiness. He was no ivory tower philosopher. He lived life to the fullest as an explorer, pilot, ship captain, photographer, researcher, and writer. Since the 1930s, L. Ron Hubbard has been a top best-selling author writing in over 35 genres, selling over 100 million books, and read in over 90 countries. He used his enormous success as a writer to fund his extensive research into the mind and life. His 530 published works represent over 60 million words, and together with over 5,000 tape lectures, contain the answers to life. His works are translated into over two dozen languages. L. Ron Hubbard has had scores of bestsellers, including Dianetics. First published in 1950, it has become the largest selling self-help book of all time. Following the publication of Dianetics, L. Ron Hubbard continued his research into what he called the center of awareness or life force. His research culminated in the practical religious philosophy of Scientology. Today, both Dianetics and Scientology are used throughout the world. Many hundreds of organizations and groups are spread over six continents, from England to Taiwan, from the United States to India. Organizations and centers exist in major cities around the world, with millions using L. Ron Hubbard's discoveries to improve their lives. L. Ron Hubbard also developed the first truly workable technology on how to study and how to learn and the only method to handle widespread illiteracy in children and adults. His study technology is used by millions of students and teachers around the world. In drug rehabilitation, L. Ron Hubbard discovered the first proven techniques to rid people of the harmful effects of drugs. Using no drugs, his methods have salvaged the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and are used by Narconon who have the world's best statistical rate of success exclusively using L. Ron Hubbard's technology. As a humanitarian, he wrote a modern, practical, moral code based on common sense 
to help arrest the declining values in society. Tens of millions of copies have been distributed internationally in numerous languages, offering the pathway to a moral and happier life. L. Ron Hubbard has been acknowledged the world over. He dedicated his life to helping his fellow man and bringing about a new civilization on Earth. Using his technology, millions are crossing the bridge to a better life.